Hello everybody, welcome back to the Garibaldi Red podcast, a Nottingham Forest podcast. And as Forest travelled down the south coast for a miserable Mother's Day, a 1-0 defeat, thanks to a goal conceded by another set piece, shock, a dodgy refereeing decision in the game, shock, and a poor team selection as well. I'm Max Sage, your host, and joined by Sarah Clapson and Dave Asprey on this Monday morning. We are live on YouTube, Garibaldi Red and Facebook Nottingham Forest News. So be sure to get your comments in throughout and we will discuss all of those. Um, Dave and Sarah, both at the game yesterday. I wasn't for various other reasons. Um, But let's start with you, Dave, in the away end, in the terraces. What was the the feeling like? I can imagine just another day of of disappointment for Nottingham Forest. Uh, As flat as the Netherlands and Lincolnshire, mate. To be honest with you, it was just there was a sense of it was quite perky to start with, and then it felt like the air was just let out of the balloon, you know. And um, it was as it was as lifeless a performance from the away end as it's been for a while. I feel I, I I mean walking out the ground there was a sense of kind of like there was a lot of resignation. There was a lot of kind of um, sort of pessimistic views going forward, I, I felt. Um, and it was almost like, I think a lot of us, I know I did, I wanted to see some kind of angry reaction from the Liverpool game, you know, some kind of embodiment of a sense of injustice to say, hey, we, we don't like what's happening to us, but it was, it was fairly passive, it was fairly bland. Yeah, there were some moments, it wasn't without, you know, the odd positive here and there. I mean, you know, Woody had a good chance second half, fashioned something out of that. You know, Divock had a couple of chances. One, perhaps the second one, just after half time, he could have done a bit better with. Um, I thought Harry Toffolo, but <laughs> Harry Toffolo is becoming one of our go-to guys. He's a real credit to our club, Harry. I thought he played well. Nico continues to play well. But unfortunately, it was, it was just a sense of one that got away and that Forrest hadn't really tried to grasp to get hold of. So it was, uh, it was all rather disappointing, mate, to be honest. Yeah, uh, very <clears throat> disappointing indeed. Um, do get your comments coming. On this Monday morning, uh, Stephen says there's potential for being in a right mess come next Monday. Six-point deduction, Luton beat Bournemouth, Luton beat Oz season. Oh, that isn't a good thought for a Monday morning. Uh, Kate says, you could see from Morgan Gibbs-White's interview that morale is low. The poor refereeing and pending points deduction is clearly affecting them, as it is us in terms of the fans. We need to be better, yes, but they are human. Sarah, what did you make of it from the press box? It's one win in 13 in all competitions, if you discount the the, the, the cup games within 90 minutes. Um, yeah, it is concerning. It's a, it, it, it is it is concerning, and the stats don't lie. And the and, and there does kind of seem to be this kind of negativity, as Dave said, coming out the ground yesterday. And I'm and I'm not kind of calling for positivity, but I kind of don't think we're maybe at that stage yet where we're really panicking. People might disagree. You might disagree. I think that the form isn't good. You're right. The performance yesterday wasn't good. Um, I don't think you can really get away from that. I thought Forrest actually started okay. The first few minutes, I thought really good intent, real positivity. I think it was Nico Williams who, who had an effort um, in the first couple of minutes and he thought, great, on the front foot, going for it. And then it, it just stopped uh, and it, it just went so flat, just lacked ideas, lacked intensity, just... It was just nothing, really. There was just not a lot to to get going with. Second half was better, I thought. Um, I mean, the, the bar w- was pretty low after the first half, but there was an improvement. Just not enough. Brighton still didn't have to work hard enough in the second half. Um, I can't remember the keeper making... Th- there was that Chris Wood chance we mentioned, but keeper didn't really have too much to do Brighton really weren't tested it it wasn't enough to to think oh a goal's coming a goal's coming something's you know something's going to happen it just felt like could have been playing all afternoon and a goal still wouldn't have come um it, it was just it was a really flat performance the form needs to change there's still 10 games to go I don't think it's quite at a that's it. It's all over stage yet. It's not. No. Far from it. There's still a lot of points to play for. 
yeah, I know that the comment we brought up about how um, the situation could look quite bleak in a few days' time if points deduction comes, if, if Luton win the, the game in hand, if Saturday's game doesn't go right. I think the situation might get a little bit worse before it has a chance to get better. But there is still a long way to go. And there's a lot that needs to be improved on. There's a lot that Forest need to get better at um, and a lot that needs to be worked on. But I, I don't think you can write anything off yet. Far from it. Yeah, um, I agree. I just think it's... Uh, I think you can kind of feel now there's a little bit of... I wouldn't say maybe toxic atmosphere, Dave, but I don't know how it was in the away end yesterday um, at the end of the game, what that kind of atmosphere was like. I wouldn't call it toxic, Max. It was, as Sarah has alluded to, it was as the game was just neutral mm. and the reaction in the away section was just neutral. People filed in, watched the game. There was some Mull of Kintyre for a bit. There was, you know, not Forest and Magic on off the pitch for a bit and then it just fizzled out and then they filed out of the ground again. And I think... It was just, uh, as far as Nottingham Forest are concerned yesterday, it was a non-event. And um, it, it, I, you know, I just thought after Liverpool and all the talk following the Liverpool game, that that anger that was around the club and that frustration and that vexation would be honed and then used as a weapon against Brighton and Hove Albion. And... and from a psychological point of view, it was almost like Forrest had forgotten what happened last week. And then they remembered it again as soon as the game had finished. And, and I, you know, I'm a bit old school. I believe that the referee's right, even when he's wrong. And um, I wish we'd stop talking about referees because we're diff with, we need to face our own issues. <laughs> okay, yeah, Moda should have been sent off. He should have gone. It was a horrendous tackle that gets worse every time you view it. I, I, when I got back last night, um, much as I found it difficult to watch the highlights, I, I watched it because I wanted to see, because I couldn't really tell from where I was in, in the Amex, just how poor a, a challenge it was. And it was dreadful when he looked at it. And he was a very lucky boy. And Nico was also a very lucky boy not to get badly injured. So, yeah, we didn't get it. But unfortunately, once, once Michael Salisbury has made his decision, it can't be changed. And, you know, we... My view is I just wouldn't talk about referees. If we're looking at referees, you know, if 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 the perception of Nottingham Forest is they're going to moan about referees all the time, the referees that we're going to get in the ten in the ten games, I think it is that remain, they're going to be like primed to deal with us. Just forget it, and move on. You know, there's a, we're looking outside the box, and there's stuff inside the box that needs sorting out. We need to deal with set pieces, as Sarah said. It's yet another one. Mm. Uh, you know, the people have said in uh, earlier in the season, Nottingham Forest are in search of an identity. Unfortunately, the identity that Forest have got at the moment is unbelievably vulnerable from set pieces. We know it. Everybody else knows it. When's something going to be done to, to deal with it, right? We do not control enough of the ball in midfield. Nico Dominguez is a terrier, works his nuts off. Ryan Yates will always give you a zillion percent. Morgan ferrets and runs about. Morgan wants to help everybody. Morgan to be a brilliant charity worker. He wants to do everybody's bits for them. But we still don't dominate midfield. And I'm looking at this game next Saturday afternoon, which is a playoff game, right? And Ross Barkley looms over the whole thing for me. Ross Barkley is one of the best midfielders in the country. Might even be the best buy of the season. And we need to find some way next week to make Barkley stand and watch us while we keep the ball. You know, and then and then going forward, you know, we don't create a lot. I mean, I have thought that the football is better under Nuno than it was under Steve, and that's no disrespect to Steve, who I adore and will always adore. You know, but yesterday we didn't see enough of that kind of front foot football. You know what I mean? And we, I, I, my view is, if we were to play better, we'd have a better chance of earning the rub of the green from referees. I just feel I feel at the moment like we 
we've been a little bit sort of self-indulgent and sort of self-righteous about it no go and win the match and then talk about the referees or then find a way not to have to talk about referees i, I find it a little bit it's almost again it's taking the moral it's, it's taking the moral high ground away i can understand nina's frustration i can understand morgan's frustration i can understand everybody being like that you know and but it can't be changed the the, the decision last week couldn't be changed that one yesterday couldn't be changed and various others you know i mean mr clattenburg might might write a letter but until ultimately it's complete he, he's completely impotent as to what he can do really so we need to attend to our business and this week we need to close ranks because next saturday afternoon we will be the most hated team in this country nobody wants us to win that game next week because we are the patsies in the fairy tale next saturday afternoon everybody that they are they are three points below us and everybody loves them everything about them is positive we're a better team than them according, according to the table but nobody's seeing anything good about us so we need to use that we are massive underdogs on saturday and we have to build on that yeah well said dave i completely agree um lots of talk about I think news there's something in my tea i think somebody put something <laughs> in the <laughs> tea max you know i was gonna say yeah uh, i don't know if you're drinking again lem lemon uh, lemon and ginger infusion very with nice. um, barbiturates in it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I made I made the mistake of not making a coffee before this podcast, and I am regretting it. Um, not saying that you two are going to put me to sleep, but 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 just saying. I can't <laughs> <make the coffee>. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let's go to some of the let's go to some of the comments. Um, Alan says, "I'm assuming he isn't a Forest fan. I don't think he is, judging from the profile picture. All I'm hearing from Forest are excuses, excuses." Yeah, uh, Andy says, good. "You could see from the team selection it was going to be a flat performance, but the referees are disgrace." Uh, Pat says, "I have a feeling that Nuno will be in trouble mm -hmm. if we lose Maybe. to Luton." Um, Sally says, I've had enough of VR, VAR and refs. It's so <laughs> stressful. I think, I think we agree. That's why we um, need the tea, Sally. <laughs> we do. We need the tea urgently. Um, Sarah, I, I often am starting to wonder now whether that Clattenburg appointment is working against Forrest and, mm. and is actually any 50 And I'm not kind of calling... I'm not saying corruption here. I'm not saying allegedly all of that. I'm I'm not going down that line. However, when you constantly see, you know, referee mistakes like this, you do start to question whether there is something else. And maybe that Clattenburg appointment is going about us. Or is it just a case of Dave, Dave says, deal with what we can control? As Steve said last week, control the controllables. And, and Forrest aren't doing that at the moment. Yeah, I, I think both things are true at the same time. I think the decisions that, that have gone against Forest, you can rack them up. So, uh, Sunday was another one. Um, it, it should have been a red card. I don't think there can be any debate about that. It was a horrible, horrible challenge. Um, yeah. Why VAR looked at it and, and didn't tell the referee to go and review it on his pitch side monitor? No idea. You could say that about a lot of decisions. That they, they, you can look back and point to a whole list of them. But at the same time, it's absolutely they've gone once once it's happened it's gone you can't do anything mm -hmm. about it you complain all you like about referees you can get mark clattenburg to explain explain decisions you can get him to to speak to howard webb you can go and try and speak to referees after the game you can't change it the only no. thing that that, that forest can change at the minute are the performances and try to change yeah. the results it true i think it, it it is something that Nuno mentions a lot about controlling what, what they can control. But you have to do that. You, he can't control what the referees do. I can absolutely understand his frustration. He was as angry as I've ever seen him um, on Sunday. He was absolutely livid in his post-match press conference. Um, he, he had steam coming out of his ears. He was fuming. Um, and quite right. I, I, again, I completely get where he's coming from. Um, but... Forest have to take control themselves and do do what they can do in terms of performances mm. and get results. I think mm. it, it, both things are true at the same time. Um, you can be angry with the referees, but Forest also have to take their own take it in their own hands, take their own initiative. Yeah, there's so much that they still need to improve on. Mm. Work yeah. on that. Um, Good. I, I think I think also, Sarah, there's <clears throat> so much to, to to improve on, and almost so little time to do it, yeah. given yeah. given the kind of crunch time that 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 
that is ahead, um, if you like. Uh, Dave says most teams suffer from VAR and refs. The performances aren't great, which is why it's highlighted more. Score more goals, win the games, and VAR will disappear True. from your minds. Uh, Simon says, Dave is right. Having an external focus of control is going to get us relegated. Need to take responsibility for what we can control. Um, I've just seen... <laughs> I've just seen a comment here that says you should get Neil Warnock in, and I just, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, oh, that's made me uh, more tea, yeah. more tea. <laughs> keep drinking, Dave. Keep drinking. Um, oh, let's let's before we touch a little bit more on the referees later on, Dave. I want to talk to you about the team selection. I just don't know why, why, why you changed it. I mean, you you, you hold Liverpool, albeit all the. The, the the referee talk at the end of it, but you hold Liverpool for for ninety eight minutes. Don't change the team. Don't fix. You know. Don't. I, yeah. I I just I just don't I just don't understand it. And and that's the thing that's angered me the most yesterday is why not start mm. the team? Me and Dave mm. Dave me and you talked about it on Friday during yeah. the Brighton preview. Send the same team out. Send a message out with that siege mentality. Us against everyone. And I just don't understand why he changed it and, and not starting a langer. For, for, I, I, yeah, I, it's just it's just really angered me. My, my view, Max, was I'd have said to him in the changing room, you've just gone toe-to-toe with the best team on the planet because anybody who's above Manchester City in the standing is the best team probably in the galaxy, right? And I would have said to our lads, you've done yourselves proud. OK, you've got beat, but you've just matched stride for stride the team that everybody in this country is either chasing or aspires to be. I'd have said a new 11 have been magic. Go and do it again at Brighton, right? That's what I would have done. I just sometimes feel that managers uh, have to justify their own existence. Look, everybody, look, I'm managing because I'm changing the team and it's almost arbitrary. And it's like, oh, I haven't seen Nuno for a while. Oh, but look, he's changing it, look. And it's just, again, this look at me kind of thing. And I, and I and I would have said, you know, our lads uh, last week actually were hard done by. Uh, well, say hard done by, but then Anthony missed those two chances, and again it comes back to us. But I would have said, right, you eleven, go and start again, and and give them that confidence. Say you've lost to the league leaders in painful circumstances, but I'm right with you. I love you to pieces. I care about you. Go and do it again, right? Um. So I didn't get there. And, and that, that hour before kickoff, that, that, you know, that hour before kickoff moment, everybody's, it's like, you, you, in a way, you build up to that hour before kickoff, sometimes more than you build up to the kickoff itself. It's just, you know, what's he going to do? You know, and I kind of looked at it. And in hindsight, maybe I kind of, I can think that like maybe he'd got a plan and his idea was to kind of get Brighton to a point where introducing Anthony and Callum would then come on and, and take advantage, you know, but, the trouble is by then we were a goal down. We'd kind of lost the initiative in the game. You know, those two lads and, and I mean there was a, <laughs> at one point he had Taiwo, Woody, Cal, and Anthony on the pitch with with Morgan. And he got like five forwards and, and we every there were people in the in the way and going, Well, I mean he's going for it, isn't he? And, but he never seemed to really get to the point where I mean Brighton really managed the game without breaking a bead of sweat at the end, they were just keeping the ball. You felt towards, you know, when are we ever going to get it back? Especially in injury time. They gave us a lesson. And, and hey, look, we're Brighton. We're an established Premier League team. We're going to treat you like we might treat West Bromwich Albion, Hull City or Ipswich Town, really. And they made us look chasing shadows. The, so the selection, maybe, you know, maybe Nuno had a had a plan. Um, you know, I mean, to be fair to Divock, he had that chance where he drilled it in quite low, and then he had the chance just after half time. You know, I thought Woody, Woody, you know, didn't do too bad considering he's been out. You know, Woody always puts himself about his hold up play is getting really, really good. You know, you know, there were we go back a few months and everybody's wondering what's the point of Chris Wood, but now Woody's part of the fabric, really, which I think is great for him. But it just never seemed to hang together. And I'm almost like, you know, well, that wasn't that against Liverpool wasn't necessarily massively broken. Why do we need to go and fix it? But Again, what's done's done, and now you know. Some, yes, there's, I'd like just we're searching for consistency in our club, and a consistency of selection might bring us consistency of performance, and and then these things then gather gather momentum, you know. But it, 
I don't know. Now he's got to think about what he does at, at the Kenny next week, which is going to be a cauldron. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, do keep your comments coming live on Facebook and YouTube. Nottingham Forest News and Gary Red. Evo says, obvious red card, but Brighton would have won anyway with 10 men. They knocked it around like a training session. We were embarrassing. The confidence is gone. Uh, Dave, you mentioned there about maybe a plan. Russ says, performances have been decent recently against top-end teams. The plan Sunday nearly worked. We should have been 2-0 up on 55 minutes. Origi misses and a keeper mistake. Um, yeah, it's those small margins that you never know if you know if it goes mm. far this way. And, and mm. we're sat here on a Monday morning talking about um, something completely different. Sarah, we'll try and pick out a few positives in a minute, um, <laughs> if there is any. But when you look at, at Forest, and I kind of look at the stats I've got written down here, it's four points from a possible 24 this year. We failed to beat the lower opposition sides four times over 90 minutes. And Forrest is currently three points above the relegation zone. Luton, game in hand, and a points deduction likely. It it doesn't make great reading, and and I suppose around the club, on on that you know we we chant so much about Forest and magic on and off the pitch, but the players, the staff, everyone associated with the football club surely got to be feeling the pressure now. Yeah, I mean, ten games to go. It's got it's got to that stage where. The, the, the fine margins really can be crucial. Um, and it's if you fall the wrong or the right side of them, then you start thinking the games are running out, time is running out. It's We talk a lot about momentum. And I think the first couple of games or the first few games that um, that Nuno had, it was there. That It was playing a different way. It was it was looking really good, really, real intent, real positive. Um, since, I think probably since the turn of the year, this calendar year, it's just not really got going um, for, mm. for many different reasons, I think. And we, um, I, I banged the drum for a long, long time about consistency and, and trying to pick a settled, find a settled team, have some kind of um, established connections and relationships in, in the side. And then you start to build momentum and you start to grow as a team. And I, I still think it's, that's why well, it's not there. Um, whether it is going to, develop in the remaining games I guess we'll have to see I think one thing that was quite telling yesterday when Nuno spoke about his um his team selection he, he mentioned the plan and, and what he was trying to do and it, it was about trying to limit Brighton and then pick the right moment to to introduce some pace in hudson Adoy and, and Alanga and it was always it was either going to be great or it was it was not going to work uh, and it was a, a little bit risky because you were relying on everything to go the right way and for the scoreline still to be that and it was really I guess one nil down you could argue Forrest still still had a chance there was still plenty of time to get something from it and um, it just didn't quite work but but Nuno he kind of said well we've got more options now so you might see a bit more of that in the games to come and I, I, I'm not sure that that's now is the right kind of time for for that kind of experimenting and um, I think a settled team would serve Forest better, particularly if you're building on, like we said, the Liverpool display when it was really good. And there was a lot of positives from it, and players were showing good form, and um, looked like confidence was was up. It, it's so. I mean, being a manager is is a heck of a job because those kind of decisions you live or die by them, um, and you can think you're doing the right thing, you can think that you've made the right choices, and it. They are made with the, the right intent. They're not. Nobody's going out there trying to to do um, to do something for the sake of it. Nuno is making those decisions because he believes that they're the right ones. He believes they can get results, and, and that's the right mm -hmm. thing to the right approach to take for certain teams. But I do think just a, a subtle team can make such a massive difference. Having options mm -hmm. is great. Having Chris Wood back, as we mentioned, is really important. Um, and yeah. having as many options at the top end of the pitch is crucial having willy bolly back i think it is really big as well um, yeah but then you're, you're left mm. with a bit of a headache of well do i change it and, and you perhaps start to overthink things particularly the position that forest are in at the minute when there's so much pressure there's so much riding on games mm. the table's still really tight and you can start to think oh it, i guess as a manager you may be second guessing yourself a little bit and thinking oh, oh if i do this maybe i should do this and Everything just kind of adds up, um, and it, yeah, it's getting to that stage where decisions really count. Do, do you know what? 
Um, I was stood in the waste section of the Amex yesterday, and it 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 comes back to me that the people we was I was stood with, everybody's eye yesterday yesterday before the game was drawn to the bench rather than the starting eleven. Everybody was looking at the bench, you know, Ibrahim, Taiwo, Callum, Anthony, Willie, you know, <laughs> and you kind of think, well, if everybody's looking at the at the bench. What does it say about the starting eleven? Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, I do think I do think the pieces are there, but um, those pieces have to start living up to the. Some of them have to start living up to reputations. I mean, there's a lot of feeling about Sangari that he hasn't really delivered yet on all the promise. You know, to pick out one. Do you think, but, Dave? Do you um, think there's enough leaders in the side? Do you think, Dave? Do you think? It's, it, it, it's kind of talked about a lot at, at, at the minute where you go from having the side last year where there was a lot of players which I think we've talked about it before that know kind of knew what it meant for the football club to get promoted whereas this side this year there's a lot of different players do you think that there is that leader mentality on the pitch and, and do you have faith in them given kind of the, the these crucial games coming up where you need those leaders uh leadership the the thing that sticks in my mind is Morgan Gibbs White in the huddle before the Manchester United game went viral. He Morgan Gibbs White inside the huddle that we shouldn't have been party to, but were party to. He was saying that the if you like the most storied club on the planet didn't want to be at the City Ground. So I thought that was leadership. So to say there's no leadership there isn't exactly correct. I think. Unfortunately, some of our leaders that we had last year are either not here, Joe Worrell, or are not quite what they were, Felipe, or, you know, sort of it, 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 one week it's Yatesy, the next it's Morg. <laughs> it, it, it's just, I think I think there are people there that, I, I think Harry Toffolo's becoming a leader, I do. I, I, Harry Toffolo, to me, the, the, if, if you like, the, the two players who I think, received the least uh, opprobrium yesterday were Nico and I think Nico's been in a really good vein of form. Ni Nico is now, Nico used to come on and do fantastic cameos. I, I Again, I recall the one against Aston Villa where he came on and he made a tackle and the whole ground stood to applaud him. Nico is now doing that on a regular basis. I think Nico's terrific. I, I, you know, Nico looks to want to get forward. He plays sensible passes when he's in a, in a, in a gets in a corner. Nico, terrific. Harry, Harry, again, Harry was there, you know, he, I think he's now, he's growing as a person in the club, the, the stuff he does for the tricky to talk stuff. I mean, Harry's becoming a real, if you think he was the make weight in the O'Brien deal, <laughs> you know, everybody wanted Lewis O'Brien and oh, by the way, here's Harry Toffolo. What a story, Harry Toffolo is a story in himself, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I think our fullbacks yesterday, and I do think Harry Toffolo, is growing into that. I think he feels more confident now to be able to say his piece. But I don't, I don't think there's a problem with leadership. I think, I think, I think they are foolish if they don't know what it means to be done in that Gary Baldy red shirt in this incredible institution of ours. You know, they, they would have to be really, really sort of psychologically off with, you know, off in a distance not to understand what it means. And this is part of my problem. I, I, Look at us. We, you know, we're one of the great football clubs of the world. Everybody knows about not the world famous City Ground, and yet it's the Brighton's, Brentford's, Bournemouth's, and Luton's that always seem to be our nemeses. And I, I desperately want to go to Luton Town and say, "Oh, this is your fairy tale, is it?" And let's stomp it flat, because if if they lose, if they lose at Dean Court on Wednesday night, and then we beat them there. That is going to completely turn around. So the kind of feeling of a little bit of dejection that we've got now, that can be all changed with one win on Saturday, right? Because at the moment, I'll bet you bottom dollar, I'll look at all the prediction sites this week, at the end of this week, you know, Chris Sutton on the BBC will have Luton to beat us. Everybody loves Luton. They are... They're not suffering second season syndrome. Right? There's a feeling of on we about us. Oh, we're like sort of, oh, we, it, it's all, well, it's off pat now. And we've got to kind of shed that second season syndrome business. Luton, Luton, Luton have got the greatest gift of all. No expectation. Everybody, everybody thought Luton Town would lose all 38 games. And Rob, Rob Edwards, who's an incredibly canny man and an excellent manager, has used that brilliantly. 
He's also used the Tom Lockyer situation brilliantly. He's given Luton Town the motivation and cause. We need to find something similar. You know what I mean? I'm not saying we want any of our lads to be ill or anything like that, like Tom was, you know, but we need to find a cause. And I, you know, it's much about leadership. It's about motivational ideas, I think, Max, to be honest. And I'd be, I'd be like proper siege mentality going to Luton Town on, on Saturday, you know, because get through the first 15, 20 minutes. I, I, the, the blueprint for us going there on Saturday is Sheffield United. Sheffield United went there and everybody, for the first time, everybody thought, oh, nah, Luton will win that. Sheffield United won 3-1. You know, and Sheffield United were good value for it. Apparently, the, the way worst team in the division beat Luton Town comfortably. So let's hope this week everybody talks about Luton Town and Nottingham Forest have forgotten and go in as underdogs and spike their party. That's what I want to see. We'll see. We will see. Such a big week. Uh, Stephen says mm. we can keep talking about poor decisions. Attitude and drive starts at the top in any walk of life. If Nuno yeah. keeps whinging to all the players, they will then buy into the hard done by official, uh, hard done by attitude, not the way to go. <clears throat> That's an interesting point. Let's touch on Sangare, Sarah, because lots of com comments co coming in about him. If I can get my words out. Um, what do you make of him? Because it, it just hasn't been hasn't been the best start, and and of course he's you know he he, he came on yesterday and it was his what well, it was his first appearance since Afcon, mm. but he didn't he didn't prove a lot before Afcon, and 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 again it seems to be a player that's almost split the fan base, and he maybe seems to be getting scapegoated a little bit now as well. I still think he's a quality player. I still think he he's he's somebody who can have a, a huge impact. It hasn't happened yet. Um, he hasn't really shown what he's about. He's not really shown what he can do. He's not. Re I can't remember any games where I can think that he really took it by the scruff of the neck and thought he's really imposed himself on here and he's really made a difference. I think before Afcon, he had started to find his feet a little bit and he looked like he was getting to grips with the Premier League and, and kind of finding his way. Um, obviously, he went away and, and then he, he had the injury and he's been a bit stop start in that sense I still think there's there's quality there but we we've seen we've seen our last season it plays don't just necessarily come into English football into the Premier League and all of a sudden it, it, they've found their feet and they're, they're settled in and it's all okay it can take time um we saw this season how I know he's not here now but Oral Mangala how he benefited from a year in the Premier League and then this season he really kicked on again. Tyro, it took him time to to find his feet and to settle. It doesn't just always happen overnight. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you get players who've come in and, and great, they're, they're off, they go. But sometimes it takes a while. Um, I think Sangari will benefit when he gets a run of games, when he gets the chance to, um, to build some momentum, find his rhythm on his own know the role that he's playing, know the, the the person that he's playing alongside. Again, we go back to this consistent team selection, but, but when you're chopping and changing and your, your midfield isn't really settled and you don't perhaps know who's going to be alongside you week to week or or what your... Yeah, players have to be adaptable. They're, they're professionals. They can do different jobs and you'd expect them to be able to take things in their stride and be able to adapt and be flexible. But I, I do think it helps when you're you're coming to a new club, you're coming to a new country, a new league, if you get the chance to have a run in your strongest role with a settled team around you, I think that would massively help him. Um, I think, given time, I think he can be a really good player. He, he just hasn't mm. quite done that yet. Um, I think coming in with a big price tag, club record signing, there was a, a lot of hype around him when he signed and, yeah. and everybody kind of felt, well, He's uh, uh, guilty of it myself, thinking he's going to be the game changer. He's the player that's going to turn everything. He's the player that's going to get Forrest playing a different way and, and be the kickstart of the season. Perhaps that's always a bit unfair um, because it's not all down to one person. It shouldn't be all down to one person. Um, and maybe we're all, well, me certainly, guilty of thinking he can come in and, and automatically change things and, and we probably have to give him a, a, the benefit of the doubt in that sense. Um, and... I think time, he just needs time. Um, and unfortunately, mm. at the minute, 
Forest haven't got that. Um, and no, that's true. That's what makes it difficult, I think, when we're coming back to team selection, thinking, well, you've got somebody like Sangare who can be so good at, at some point. He's not there at the minute. So so what does Nuno do? Does he stick with with Ryan Yates, with, with Danilo, with Dominguez? Um, or, or do you say, well, OK, Ibrahim, have a few games, have a bit of time, find your feet. It's such a difficult position to be in when points are so important, when results and games matter so much. Mm. There's, there's not that luxury anymore of, of giving players the opportunity to, to bed in. True. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it all comes back to that consistency uh, kind of point. I think it was kind of worth noting that he did very well against Newcastle away. That's probably his standout he did. performance. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. At, not about that at, at Boxing Day. So fingers yeah. crossed he can get back to that to, to that level. Um, mm. Set pieces, Dave. Wanted to touch on those. I kind of mentioned it a little bit at the start of we this podcast, to. but. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, I mean, I, I, I genuinely could probably pull up some stats, and I, don't, and I don't want to read don't. them out because it's probably concerning. I think, I think Forest are now bottom of the Premier League in terms of goals conceded from set pieces. Mm. <laughs> Steve Cooper, when he was at the club before Nuno was sat, there was a set piece coach brought in, someone that Cooper wanted rather than Marinakis. He's still at the club. What role he plays, I don't know. Love to know. Um, but uh, Dave, I just think that that. that that set pieces are just such an issue this season. And also, I was speaking to a friend of mine yesterday, Dave, and he was saying that he watched Palace and since Glasner's come in and almost they change set pieces every single time they put a ball into the box or or, mm. or, or they have a set piece. Whereas Forest, it's the same tactic every time and we just can't seem to beat the first man. That's attacking, defending set pieces. We all know what yeah. happens. Yeah, it's, it's just... A, a glaring Achilles heel. I mean, take Everton, who, you know, may end up, Everton may end up being our saviour by being the third one to go with the, the two at the bottom rather than Luton. Everton are dynamite from set pieces. They might even be like second or third in the in the scoring from set pieces ranks. I think they might even be the best team for corners, Everton. They've got you know, some they good, make yeah. use of Yeah, they make use of Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Beto and Tarkovsky and Branthwaite and people like that. With us, we, we are on, on either side of a set piece, just the worst team in the division. I do think, uh, Sarah's just mentioned uh, Willie Bolly. I think him coming back in might help, you know, when Willie's back to full full speed. You know, cause Willie, if you like, and, and, and going back to the leadership thing, you get the impression from you know, the little clips that you see on, on YouTube and that. And I, and I think the, the spirit in the squad's good. They all get on really, real, really well. I don't think there are any sore thumbs or bad apples in there you know but i get a sense from listening to what the lads say that willie is a kind of a father figure big brother to everybody now willie willie might come back in and provide that leadership but we need somebody to stamp their mark on like set pieces defending set pieces that could be willie set pieces the other end it, i mean it seems <laughs> I was going to say it falls on Morgan, but I think Morgan goes and demands that he has to do it. I, again, it comes back to Morgan feeling that he owes us for the fee. And I, I like that attitude. You know, Morgan is prepared to put his head above the parapet and say, I'll take it and all that kind of stuff. There were people saying yesterday, oh, get him off, get him off free kicks and all this kind of thing. And you, you look around the team, you think, well, there was the one that Murillo somehow managed to work his way up the pecking order to take one yesterday. <laughs> and he, he had a good shot, but unfortunately, Bert, Bert, you know, Bert Verbruggen was like, Thanks, mate. I just caught it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I I honestly don't know. It, the the set-piece coach, I mean, again, without being a relic of a bygone age, talk to Brian Clough about set-piece coaches. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, boy. You would be laughed out of court. Similarly, if you said to Brian Clough, uh, we're, bringing in a, we're bringing in a referee anal analyst, and Cloughy would say, none of my teams get red or yellow cards. And if you go back to the eight, the team in the eighties, the Choir Boys, the the Nigel Webby, Gary Crosby team, they never got yellows or reds because they they were they weren't bothered about the referees. They were terrified about what was going on inside the dressing room. I mean, to face him when they went back in, because quite rightly he saw a yellow and a red card as a dereliction of duty and an initiative handed to the opposition. Right. So the set piece coach, to me, he's having as much influence on the club at the moment as Harry Arter is. So. I, I find it, what do you need a set-piece coach for? I mean, I, I, 
you, you can, you, sometimes you know you can over coach you know if you're defending a set piece pick your man up go with him win your individual battle and get the thing out get rid of it it's like last weekend again against liverpool tywo had a chance callum had a chance I don't, I don't know if they knew where it was located in the ground, but there is a rose head there and they could have found it and we could have got a great point against the league leaders, right? It's just common sense. It's win your, win your duel, pick your man up, you know, and if a guy's pushing you, push him back. What, you know what I mean? It, it, it's simple, but Forrest just can't seem to do it and, and it's a major failing. Lute, Luton are far better at set pieces than us. They stick the ball in the box. Carlton Morris gets his head on it. Elijah Adebayo gets his head on it. You know, and Rob Edwards will be there saying that, uh, gentlemen, I don't know if you've noticed, but Nottingham Forest are not very good at set pieces, so let's use them. And we're going to get bombarded at the weekend. Willie would come back in for me at the weekend. I love Andy, Andy Omabamadeli. I think he's a terrific prospect. And, you know, I, what happened yesterday happened. And, and Andy's going to be a hell of a player. He's a, a very elegant defender. I really like Andy. But Willie comes back in for me next week against Luton. Because somebody has to come in. I mean, I looked at I looked at the um, the corners yesterday, and Lewis Dunk was like a, a skyscraper above everybody, and 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 we looked small yesterday, and we need Willie to come back in. I, I think uh, next week, but the set pieces thing has to be addressed, and this this coach and I'm I'm probably doing him a disservice. I'm sure he's doing good things behind the scenes. Start earning your money, mate, because. We have got 10 games. Yet yeah, it's not done and dusted yet. There's 30 points there. Get 15 of those. Yeah, we're all right. You know, we might get some taken off. But um, it has to be dealt with. It, it, you know, to keep allowing it to persist is, is that somewhere near the definition of insanity? Something's got to be done about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it hasn't. It, it's got to be done pretty quick. Um Right, I'm, we're going to touch on the looting game in a minute, but I wanted to put this point um, to you both. Kind of did a bit of research actually last night and yesterday, um, and I want to compare. Dave, you mentioned about the football being better under Nuno uh, than under Cooper. Um, so Steve Cooper, uh, Premier League games seventeen, uh, Premier League points fourteen, points per game average, zero point eight two. Nuno, Premier League games eleven points ten out of those eleven games, and his points per average is zero point ninety. So it's only kind of if you look at the stats, it's only about zero point eight decimal, and we look at kind of all of those. You need but... to get out more, Max. Yeah, I do, mate. Don't I? I do. Out, I do. Oh, mate, really? <laughs> I need to. Yeah, I need to start socialising. Um, you need to be a set piece coach, mate. That's what you need to be. <laughs> maybe, maybe if Forrester are listening, you can sign me up as a set piece coach. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I was going to say I could be. A, I, I, could, I could. I could be a set piece coach on the Tuesday morning and a podcast host on the Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that'd be quite a good career. I mean, that's the yeah. oddest career move ever. Um, <laughs> Sarah, when you look at those stats. How I mean, how do you compare Steve Cooper and Nuno? And I, I saw a lot of talk on Twitter yesterday. We have lost a little bit of that feel-good factor, that connection between the manager and the, and, and the player. Not the players, but the manager and the fans. I mean, I, 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 just, I, just, I just wonder where, whether that's what Forrest are lacking at the minute, is that connection kind of on the pitch in terms of, you know, there's a manager that comes at the end and claps the fans and the Forest fans sing their name. And, and I just don't think that's the case at the minute with Cooper, and, uh, with Nuno compared to Cooper. I think it was always going to be difficult for, for any manager that, that came after Steve Cooper because of the relationship that he developed. But that was built on results. If, if Steve Cooper hadn't got the results he had, we wouldn't have had those moments of fist pumps and of, of the city ground being all united and together as one. I think the first, the, go back to that Newcastle game, that was an incredible atmosphere. The the away end was absolutely brilliant that day. Um, mm, it was. And, and go back to Nuno going up to the, the away fans then and, and there was that real, it was so early in his tenure. Was it his second game, maybe third or second game, something yeah, like that? And, yeah, and yeah. he thought automatically, he's, you know, he's automatically established a connection and it came with the mm. result results haven't been there so he's not had that that opportunity to to go around and 
Mm. Credit to him, he still goes around and, and salutes the, the fans and acknowledges the support. He still talks a lot in um, in interviews about the support and the backing that his team are getting, even when things aren't going um, the right way. He's still really conscious of um, the fact that fans travel up and down the country, that they spend a lot of money, that they they put a lot of um, a lot of finance, a lot of energy into to following the team. He's really conscious of that. I, I think it, it's a little bit unfair to say that that I know we we all did it talk about how Steve Cooper got the club and how he he, had, he did have such a great relationship, but. I think it's 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 now about establishing a different one, and I think Nuno did. But when you're not getting results, it's so difficult to do that because you yeah. don't have those moments. You don't have that that big eruption at the end of games where where everybody feels like they're connected and they're together and there's a unity. Yeah. Forest have lost four on the bounce. They, they've had some really tough results. Um, I think it, it when it's not going for you, it always seems like things aren't right or or. Yeah. You kind of pick things like that out and I think it, sometimes it, things like that are down to circumstance and um, if results change, if in the next 10 games Forrest go on a great run and we have some really big moments at the city ground like we had previously that relationship will be there with Nuno again um, it, yeah. it, it, not, I'm not saying it's not there at the minute but it's just that you don't have those moments it's all built on, on big moments um, and we haven't had a lot of those in the last two in the last two months or so. Um, so I, it can change. It can absolutely change in the last ten games. Um, it, it's just about getting going again. Yeah, winning Saturday. Yeah, winning, yeah winning exactly. Saturday. Exactly. This, I mean, yeah, this this game to me, uh, folks, it's been like a beacon, you know, on the headland. Yeah, there was Brighton and there was all these other games, but that one has been sticking there. You know, beaming out at me for ages. He wins at the Kenny and he puts distance between them and us, between us and their fairy tale. And I'll tell you what, if we win there and he comes and stands in front of that tiny away section at the Kenny and, you know, where we walk between those two terraced houses to get in there and we've won there. He, he all, all of this talk, Sarah's exactly right. Nuno's a different beast to Steve. Steve's a touchy-feely, tactile, let's be friends, kind of wants to put his arm around everybody. Wonderful man. Love Steve. You know, may have run out of juice as a manager, but as a human being, par excellence. Absolutely. Anybody name-calling Steve Cooper or like, as a human being, take a look at yourselves. He ran out of gas as a manager and the change was, yeah, necessary. Nuno is a different man. He's not like that. Nuno's quite sort of, in his own way, reserved. I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know what Sarah. I feel sorry for Sarah players. having to go to the press conferences yeah. every week. Yeah. I mean, my, I, I love dear old Colin, <laughs> and it's good that he, they obviously get in on. You know, Colin builds a rapport with managers. He had a great rapport with Steve. Seems to have a good rapport with Nuno. And yet, Colin's there. You can obviously like Colin's wearing a protective suit in case Nuno goes like you know double, double, double fishing. You know what I mean? And I mean the, the one last week, the ninety seconds where Colin was sort of left out, and oh well, and Nuno's gone now. You know what I mean? But and and he's a different beast, and yeah. and that you have to understand the the individualities of these guys. But like Sarah's absolutely right. At the point where we'd kind of played really, really well with Terman against Bournemouth in his first game, and and again there was another decision in that game, the Willie sending off, right? Newcastle away was, what? Where's that come from? Thank you for my Christmas present a day late, and then Manchester United, and at that point we're like, wow, and then it's just petered out a bit, the the fizz has gone out of it a little bit. Win. It's a, it's a, it's our biggest game. I actually suggest it's our biggest game next week since the playoff final against Huddersfield. I really do think that because we win that, and then everybody will notice us. Everybody at the moment is talking about Luton Town. Yeah, yeah. like I said, it, it drives me bonkers. They're three points below us, which says yes, they're not as good as us. And it, everything about them is oh, isn't it wonderful? They smell of lavender and chamomile, and everybody about. Everybody there you know, just writes us off. You know, we're the sort of team where nobody will put any of our players in their fantasy league team. I watch Fantasy Football League on the telly every Friday night. I haven't seen a Forest player mentioned once yet. 
So we have to kind of reverse that trend of thinking. And Nuno will be fated to the rafters if we win on Saturday. Sarah's bang on, as she always says, get a result and that will build the rapport. But the longer it goes with days like yesterday, then that that relationship is going to be very, very hard to cultivate. And, um, you know, there are 30 points. It, I was very, very glum yesterday, for, you know, for, for reasons more than football without going into personal stuff. And it just felt, I was like, really came out of the, out of the I nearly said the Goldstone there, <laughs> sorry, out of the Amex. And it was like, oh, come all this way. And that's, uh, and, and there was a lot of us feeling like that. But, you know, here we are in the cold light of a Monday morning and there's a hell of a lot to play for and it isn't done and dusted yet. So win next Saturday because it, really that game should be the main game on the, on the Sunday afternoon football with Peter Drury on it. Because it's a bigger game than it's a bigger game than any of the FA Cup quarterfinals. You know, it's a real cup. It's, it's a six point. It's a playoff game, and I do think if we can get three at the Kenny, three at Bramall Lane, three at Turf Moor, and maybe something at Goodison, because they are, I think they're the four key games for us. Those those four away games. Our lot might just be in business. That will do us nicely. I think that ends us at quite a nice point. Um, Dave, Dave, thank you for today because uh, the viewers won't know, but you stepped off the bench last minute. It was like 90... <laughs> I've got out like, of bed, back. It was like <laughs> well. 99th minute and brought and he assisted you and you managed to come on the podcast. So thank you last minute, Dave, today. My pleasure. I'm sorry about my phone going off. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> That, those are the uh, the dangers of live TV. Never work, never work with children, animals, and Dave Asprey. All right. Well, it, it, it's your agent. It you laugh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sort that, Clapson. You think I need it? I, I, the only the only agent I'm dealing with at the moment, Doc, is is the estate agent because I'm selling mum and dad's house. <laughs> right, Dave. That'll oh, do us nicely. Geez, Thank geez, you. Geez, geez, geez. I've, 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 just, I've just got I've just got deja vu to yesterday when Robbie Savage decided to answer his phone live on Five Live, which made me laugh. <laughs> um, Sarah, thank you as always. Um, safe trip to you both down to yeah down to Luton next week. Yeah. Such a big game. We'll have stuff this week as well. Um, we've got previews and, and bits and pieces. Uh, such a big week. Lots to talk about. Um, but fingers crossed that that, that that Forest can get something next week. Um, we do feel negative today. But there is a little bit of positivity. Win, a, win next week, as you said. Luton lose against with uh, with their game uh, in hand. Forest, Forest look a little bit more hopeful and feel a lot more hopeful. So fingers crossed. I'm going to end on a positive note for once, rather than a negative one. Uh, have a great rest of your week, whatever you are up to. Thanks for all your comments. Do leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you did enjoy. It really helps the podcast. So be sure to do that. And uh, Dave, thanks for getting out of bed. Sarah, thanks as always. And have a wonderful go. rest of your Monday. You can go into bed, back to bed. I might, I might go back to bed and have a lie down in a dark room. Goodbye. <laughs>